Welcome to Free Media, Free Minds, a program where we discuss issues pertaining to media and media freedom in South Africa. Today we discuss independent filmmakers, the world they operate in, the challenges they face and the role of institutions like special purpose vehicles, the SPVs, like film commissions and other government agencies. Well, we are joined in studio today by Dennis Lilly. He is the CEO of the Cape Formal Commission and also Kangalani Mashalela and he is an independent film Maker, as well as we are um, William she of course a director and producer she's directed and produced six uh, documentary films she's also produced uh, three independent films as well as uh, four independent documentaries that she is still busy with uh, on uh, the Hoi the indigenous people here in South Africa welcome to you all Thank you. well before we get to the discussion we take a look at uh, an insert on the topic The challenges um, obviously start out with, for one, um, to have access to educational institutions to study film. As you know, film is a very expensive medium, um, and I'm like the average um, kid, and especially I'm speaking from specifically from a working class uh, community perspective. You know, to afford 50,000 rand a year, it's like you know, kind of unheard of. I'm like, it's really ridiculous in terms of. So those kids, yeah, which is the majority of this country. Uh, if you look at our population of uh, 49 million people, you know the children um, within that um, they'll wants to do want to, would like to do film uh, will never actually have the opportunity, you know, because um, this is far-fetched, you know, dream. Our educational um, structure needs to be readjusted in terms of its fees to make it accessible for the average youngster who would like to, you know, uh, become a filmmaker who has talent, natural raw talent. So I think that's something that we need to think about, especially our government institutions, our Department of Art and Culture, our National Film and Video Foundations, our, where we are now in Cape Town, the Cape Town Film Commission, because obviously they're invisible um, and they're kind of very liberal in their approach. The challenges really stems from our funding, yeah? I mean, that's, that's an issue across the board, yeah? Whether you're an established production company or whether you're an emerging. Uh, and I think the other issue is obviously to allow the emerging filmmaker to really fully um, express himself or herself. No dictator, no broadcaster, no uh, you know, uh, mainstream production company dictates the content of the, of the filmmaker. Is the film landscape democratic in terms of uh, film ownership? No, it's not you know, um, democratic at all. As I said earlier, that it's still owned uh, purely by, um, by white production companies, um, old money. Um, that has never really been transformed, you know, and, 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 and redistributed, you know, within the majority of the country. Yeah, so obviously they get first privilege to, to win the tender. You know, when they do a pitch, you know, they would win the pitch. Um, and, and, and Cape Town is a classical example. Uh, the advertisement industry itself is, you know, owned by them. Yeah, so I think that is undemocratic, you know, it can never be democratic um, where there's such a large scale inequality. Within and also for the for the ghetto kid to, to have access to the industry, I think um, um, transformation is, an, is a critical issue that we need to, to talk about and we need to dissect it and we need to remind people constantly because that's important. Yeah, it's still very much a uh, industry for the privilege, and I think that needs to change as well because you know people f from the townships have a lot of stories to offer. Film commission, what does it stand for? <laughs> You know, yeah, I mean, like, uh, film in general, whether it's, you know, uh, facilitating um, uh, European production companies to be, I mean, like, it shouldn't, because it seems like the film commissions, that's their, that's their main priority, to be a service provider. I mean, that's completely, it, it contradicts what it represents and what it's supposed to represent and what it stands for. If government funding, if that's the source of funding for them, it means government's mandate is that the majority, you know, must have access to the funding. Much, much been said by the Film Commission and we'll come to Dennis Lilly where that is concerned. Um, let's, let's find out from yourself, uh, Kankalani, uh, what are the challenges faced by independent filmmakers? Of course, in the incident they've mentioned some of that, but from your side, what are the challenges faced by independent filmmakers? 
I think there are a lot, numerous, we can count until this program ends. But I think one of the most important thing is the access to funding, uh, which no one knows where it should be coming from. But I think uh, independent filmmakers are the ones at risk more than any other filmmaker. I'm talking about the established filmmakers. Because we, we as independent filmmakers, we're always like taking out of our pocket. We don't have what's so-called like investor confidence and we don't even have the government being confident in supporting us. So I think uh, challenges for us is just the issue of cash flow. Mm. We, we do get money, but sometimes it's money to eat, not money to make another production. But some of us sacrifice the eating part and we put money into the next project. So I think that's the biggest challenge is the access to funds. You know, it sounds like uh, we uh, independent filmmakers are concerned that it is indeed uh, almost like a labor of love. Uh, Dennis, we've, we've heard uh, the insert. And speak to us about um, the Cape Film Commission. What is the mandate of the Cape Film Commission and how does it ensure that an enabling environment is created for an independent or for the independent filmmakers? Yeah, I, I think I need to, to clarify exactly what the Film Commission is. Thank yeah. you. Um, and I, I think there was some misunderstanding from, from the gentleman who, who was at the top of the program there. Um, we're funded by the provincial government and by the city of Cape Town. And if you look at uh, what a film commission is internationally, what it's recognised as, it's, it's an agency that's aligned to economic development and tourism. And it's, it's here to promote, in this particular instance, uh, Cape Town and the Western Cape as a filmmaking destination. So. We're here to attract international productions, co-productions, and productions from around Africa and, and South Africa to come to Cape Town, the Western Cape, to film. Um, mm. so, so your mandate is not basically to <coughs> train people or... Um, no, the, the, there is a separate mandate. The, mm. the, 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 the mandate I, I, I've just outlined is, is really what's aligned us to other international film commissions uh, through the AFCI, which is the Association of Film Commissions International. Um, who have in the region about 350 different memberships around the world, predominantly from the USA. Um, the reason we align ourselves with that is, is it's a recognizable, recognizable institution from a filmmaker's point of view who want to come to a new location. Um, the, the, the Film Commission is normally the first point of contact. But <coughs> within the context of that, we're, we're funded by um, provincial and local governments to capacitate and train the industry. So we're here as an enabling uh, body to, to assist in um, independent filmmakers and emerging filmmakers and also allow um, cer certain um, elements of the community to, to access training and opportunities within film. And it's not just specifically the filmmaking aspect of it. I mean, if, if you look at the, the multiplier, which is used uh, in terms of the economic impact for film, it's, it's about 2.3. So for every rand that is spent directly on film, there is 2.3 rand spent in other areas that support film, so transport, security, catering, that sort of thing. So it, it's broader than just the filmmaker. Mm. So, so why do they have uh, the uh, independent filmmakers or the emerging filmmakers, why do they have that perception um, uh, that uh, they not, um, uh, that the Film Commission is not perhaps doing enough where the development is concerned or the fact that, or giving them support in a sense of where they can perhaps produce films? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, again, I, I think we've got to unpack uh, what the other government institutions are here for. I mean, you know, reference was made to the National Film and Video Foundation, whose mandate through Depart National Department of Arts and Culture is, is to fund filmmaking. And they've got certain criteria that they put in place for films to be funded. Um, they've recently changed that, and it's predominantly looking at what is a South African story and, and, and how, do you, how do you identify that. Um, so that, that's one aspect of it. The, the other is there's obviously funding and support through the DTI and then there's the tax incentives that come through through SARS. And then for training, uh, we're working with the CETAs to, to create bursaries. So it, it, it's multi-layered at this stage. We've been lobbying for quite some time to, to create a provincial film fund to, to allow the local film community to access to funds to, to kickstart what they're trying to do. Um, but it's a long process. The, the, there needs to be a change of legislation. Things have got to go through uh, provincial parliament to do that. Um, but we're making some headway. You know, what, what I'm seeing from um, the current politicians, uh, certainly from MEC Windy in, in the province and, and, and Pascoe and Walker in, in the yeah. city, that there's a lot of support there and a recognized um, function that comes through film that, that we need to support. Okay, thank you yeah. so much, uh, okay. Dennis Lilly. We'll be right back after the break. Okay.
Welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. And we continue our discussion on uh, the independent uh, filmmakers. We only have heard what Dennis uh, Lilly has said uh, earlier where the Film Commission is concerned. From your side, where, um, where should the focus be, the servicing or facilitation sector or local content creation? Well, I think at the moment Dennis has clearly outlined what the Cape Film Commission's mandate seems to be, which is about um, investment um, and promotion of the facilitations industry, which is essentially marketing Cape Town as a destination to shoot international productions. Um, and if you look at that model, it doesn't benefit independent or cr uh, creatives in any way. Um, we are wanting to tell our stories from our perspective and we need the support of a localized funding body and the Film Commission is not doing that, you know. So then they say, let's move to the NAVF. The NAVF is meant to be doing that, but the NAVF is servicing the whole country. I mean, the NAVF had their first um, budget meeting, I think the seventh month of this year. You know, that's how long we have to wait when you submit a funding proposal. Um, and I know in the past, the Cape Film Commission did fund films. Um, this is several years ago. I remember with Hip Hop Revolution, I got a tiny funding grant from the Film Commission, like 15,000 Rand for research and development for my film. And when I approached the NFVF for funding, they funded my film because I had support from my local Film Commission. Now, if you look at Gauteng, the Gauteng Film Commission supports Gauteng filmmakers, right? So if you can't give us funding grants, what are you giving? What are you doing for us? You know, I don't see the, the Cape Film Commission as being visible in any way for independent filmmakers. Besides the courses and training that they run via MapSita, which it is benefiting somebody's pockets in some way because somebody's getting paid to run those courses, right? Um, also, black filmmakers are not being trained to, to shoot on film. You know, if you go onto a commercial production set, you'll see that the black people on set are never HODs of a department. Um, they're working in production, doing logistics, um, maybe are chaperones, PAs, etc. You know, and there's, there, there's a huge um, discrepancy in the demographic of how film runs in this town. If you go to Joburg, if you look at the film industry, you'll see black DOP shooting on films on set, you know, using high end cameras. Here we're shooting commercial commercials with the best equipment, but black people never get to touch those things, you know. So, they, yeah, the Film Commission has a lot of work to do. And if I may interject just directly on what you're saying, I think it's 100% true, you know, and it also needs like a political willingness of the province and the city at large, you know, to go beyond what they're doing, because it's been proven on the past 10 to 15 years that the current model is currently not working, and we see now the agency, our own agency is being benefiting the foreign lens, like Hollywood, mm. also Bollywood shortly is in, is in town doing one or two projects and a lot of like UK based productions that come to town and we're not happy about that and we're not the p right people maybe to tell them what to do because they get paid and they're professionals and we respect that. But it's been proven and we had a conversation with mm. uh, Mama Helen Zila back when she was um, uh, still the, the, with the city of Cape Town, not with the province. And we wanted to understand what she understand about the Film Commission under the leadership of Lawrence Michel. And mm. she was also, seems to be on our side, you know, that they shouldn't be working for Hollywood to come to town and give them the best rates and best things they cannot even afford to us. So it's also now about the whole political willingness of Denise's office. If they want to continue supporting the, the foreign lands or they want to support indigenous people. And part of this thing or the solution or my solution is not to stop what they're doing, but maybe is to listen on what the filmmakers on the ground are saying. Yeah. I think also it, it's, it's, it's neo-colonialism, you know, it's just a new way of, of, of colonizing our land. You know, all these overseas companies come predominantly white owned production companies uh, with a commercial slant, you know, feeding our people commercial information, mass consumed information. We are on the ground. We are wanting, we are making revolutionary films to nurture our people's minds, you know, mm -hmm. and we, we are artists. We need the support of a film commission, you know. Or you, can, you can say we're using the overseas models of film commissions, etc. But you know, other countries support their filmmakers and nurture their filmmakers very differently to, to the way we are treated here in this country. And I'm not only talking about the NVF, I'm talking about locally because it starts locally. 
Yeah, well, it seems uh, uh, there, there is a lot where um, the independent uh, filmmakers are concerned, and we'll give Dennis Lilly an opportunity after the break to uh, respond to what uh, they have been uh, saying. Stay tuned. Uh, this is uh, Free Media, Free Minds. Welcome back to Free Media, Free Minds. We continue our discussion on independent filmmakers. Dennis, let's start with you in this segment and allow you to, uh, of course, uh, you know, reply to what we um, have said uh, earlier. Of course, the independent filmmakers uh, look not, uh, they're not very happy about what's happening in the industry. Just your comment on what you yeah, said. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think they've got a point. Uh, I, I think I need to defend the, the Film Commission a little bit because... Um, I only took over responsibility about a year ago uh, and I inherited a staff of two people. I've now got a, a staff complement of eight and we've got funding for about 10 million. If you compare that to Hao Teng, which a comment was made as a comparison, uh, I believe they've got double the funding and they've got 22 members of staff. So they've got the capacity to deliver a lot more than, than we have currently. And it's, some, it's something... To say, allocate 500,000 rand of your budget to independent filmmakers and say, we're going to help 10 filmmakers and give them a funding grant of 50,000 Rand. That could really help 10 filmmakers well, to produce well, okay, films, Okay, well, it, you know? it, yeah, but if, if I can finish responding, because, you know, th there was an accusation that we're not really listening and not doing much for uh, independent filmmakers in the local industry. In fact, at our AGM a couple of months ago, and prior to that, we, we met with uh, independent filmmakers. I think there was about 70 uh, came to the forum, and, and we asked them what it was that they expected from a film commission and, and what they were trying to um, say and, and what they wanted us to hear. Um, following that, we, we put a program in place to, to uh, have some sort of interaction to understand that. Um, ultimately, that fell away because the independent filmmakers we were talking to didn't like the way we were pr approaching it, um, so we changed the tact. Um, at our AGM, we put out a call uh, for people to come into discussion forums and advise us what the industry needed locally. Um, out of our 900 members, we had uh, responses from six individuals. Um, you know, and, and it's very difficult for us if we're asking industry locally what is, it, what is it you're looking for from a film commission? And they don't tell us. We can't do much about it. I was at that meeting, you know, with the, the, 70, you know, with the 70 independent filmmakers. Yeah. And there was no process involved in that, you know. It was throw all the independent filmmakers in one room. Let's elect a, a committee for independent filmmakers. Nobody's CVs were reviewed. Nobody got a chance to even speak about their work. So the, the body of people were that, elected. Not one of them have actually, or I don't know, but I, I don't think any of them have actually made an independent that wasn't, film. No, no, but that, wasn't, that, that wasn't actually the purpose okay, of the meeting. The, the, the meeting was called because we'd had people, emerging filmmakers, who'd said to us, can you come and listen to us? So we created a forum to be, for people to listen to. And, and we called the forum for emerging filmmakers, and in that forum, everybody said, "But we're not emerging filmmakers," and we couldn't actually understand. But in okay, that case, oh, why, sorry, why I can't allow me yeah. if you just yeah, if can okay. your comment. I, th I think just mm. to quickly respond to what you're saying and what Dennis has said earlier on is that, fortunate or maybe unfortunately, I was part of the 70 that met, and we did like a small play election type of thing. And I was fortunate or unfortunately to be part of the top seven that was elected to, to represent the voices or to be facilitating the communication between the group of 70 and the film commission. To my amusement or to also a disappointment the way that we interacted to, with the Cape Film Commission and it gets to a, a point where the Cape Film Commission issued a statement, hopefully not on our behalf, but it was speaking about us or about the work that we're supposed to do, that none of the seven of us were happy about the way the information was sent out to the 70 members. And the other most interesting thing is that there was no communication shortly before the message was sent out to the general 70, to the seven of us, that we've been communicating in about two meetings that we had at the Cape Home Commission as a, 
as a follow-up to the greater or the bigger meeting that we had. And uh, I felt like, you know, like in, earlier in the year, we had the Commercial Producers Association, we had the Independent Producers Organization, we had a lot of the so-called established and so-called white organizations who were very supportive of the Film Commission, who were no longer supportive to the Film Commission. So yeah. to me, it looked like the whole 70 that were called to meet were being sort of like yeah, just strategic. Strategic to get, to get support, to get us to yeah. be in aligned with them and we move forward. And the moment they realize that we don't have the same agendas as they had, we had our own agendas that has to do with our own development as individuals and as a people, like yeah. the group. So, so, so you're saying okay, that so, so it, it, really it, there's it, nothing that they're not listening to you? Are you saying that the came from well, well, I, I, I don't, I don't think Dennis, let, let's hear from you. Well, I, I don't think they're actually listening to what we're saying because uh, this is the first I've heard of this. Um, I mean, it's interesting they've chosen to do this on television. But no, Dennis, let me no, sort of, I'm with sorry, all due respect, the with same all due song respect, tenaciously at all Cape Film Commission but, meetings. I have been tenaciously sorry, why, attending your meetings. When? I, the, the, I sent you an official email which I cc to the minister saying I will no longer be attending your meetings because for me it's a waste of time. And that's what that was the step I took because I, I really thought it think and still think it's a waste of time. And if I can just interject, so, so, but so, I have so, tenaciously so, so, been so, attending so, your meeting, sing, meetings, singing the same song all the time. They've got footage. Not as only well not of, only myself, of, of, Kangalani, mm -hmm. a group of in, independent this, filmmakers. We're always this, saying the same been, things, and you're always saying we're not. Why are you calling clusters? To say what? Because we, we're already saying what we need to say at these meetings. How, how, because there's too many people in the meeting, the message okay, okay. gets Let lost. Me we were trying to focus it into your particular needs. Let me and to the best of my knowledge, there's only been two meetings. Okay, let me say something, Dennis, about saying this on television. I've got a group of mass <coughs> emails for the past two months that I can share with everyone where I'm saying the same thing, that if the Cape Film Commission continue to deal with predominantly like black people, whether they are brown or whatever color, the way they did, we, won't, we will not support their cause. I've sent these emails and we had your responses, Dennis. Uh, it's not like we're here to stage this on television. Yeah. There's footage it, it, it of... Is, okay, let, let me just no, finish. Let not, me finish. There's footage that you might get, even at the Cape Film Commission of the last AGM, where there was the Minister of Trade and Industry, Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis was there, and we were speaking the same way we were speaking. There's the meeting before that. I'm, before, I'm sorry, but, no, he, I, but, no, but that minister's never attended any of my no, meetings. I just, no, I'm, I'm developing a sentence, Dennis. You, if you can allow me to finish, then you can... No, but, but you're misrepresenting the situation because there was no, there was no, no, no minister. No, no, I'm, I'm making was, a particular no, reference to... Um, listen, I'm making um, a particular yes, reference... Yes, but please, please be accurate in your report. No, 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 I'm not making a mistake, you must understand. I'm saying this is not the first time we're publicly speaking about our views towards the Cape Film Commission. We did it when the Minister of Trade and Industry, I'm not making a mistake, the National Minister of Trade and Industry was there. Uh, that, that, no, okay. that was before right. my no, It I'm, seems I'm, that, that we, we going, we're appointed. reaching a stalemate here yeah. in no, this interview. Can I just finish and, my statement? Uh, can we just move on to the next question, uh, if you don't mind? Of course, um, let's look at uh, the Western Cape. And, and uh, if I can get a comment from we, you, uh, we, um, how does the general public benefit from a film in the Western Cape? Um, you know, like we've been saying all the time, the commercials industry benefits from the film industry in the Western Cape. And this is a predominantly white-owned and controlled industry. Um, then, you know, if you look at economic development and tourism, they're saying, well, it, it, it benefits broadly because they, it brings tourism into the country and therefore, you know, there are economic um, sort of advantages mm -hmm. for the country. But, uh, you know, money circulating in the same places, in the higher echelons of society, it doesn't ever reach, uh, you know, people on the ground. It doesn't benefit grassroots filmmakers in any way. And I would think, like, in, in, in some other countries, what happens is that there's a tax, a, a small tax, which is charged um, to the facilitation companies or the overseas production houses, and, those, and that money gets um, pumped into the local um, film industry. And that's maybe something that the Film Commission needs to consider, you know, because the disparity is too huge, you know. Their commercial, in, um, commercial companies having millions going through their companies, you know, per month in season, whereas we as filmmakers are struggling to pay the rent, feed ourselves, um, move on to our next project. But don't you think that's what we're trying to assist with? We can't assist if you keep attacking us. We're, we're trying to work with you to change things. And, and surely, the way that we've restructured the Film Commission before the AGM and following the AGM 
is a clear signal that that's what we're looking at, transformation. It do, it's, it's unhelpful to, to lay criticisms at the door of my office where we don't have that responsibility. I we, think we, it is, we, if it's not your responsibility, whose responsibility is it? But, but there we, be with all, with all, due, no, with all due respect, that, no. allocate this job to another entity to look after the needs of our emerging independent filmmakers, but our industry. I'm, I'm because sorry, you're but you're, you're saying that it's not your mandate. You're, you're, I'm not saying it's not my mandate, but you're complaining about a, a sector of the industry which is already established. What we're trying to do is leverage from that to create an industry that's transformed. But criticizing what we're trying to do constantly in a public manner is unhelpful because it's undermining what we're, we're trying to achieve together. But what have you done? What have you done? Okay, in, okay, in if we can, a bit, you, we, we have one minute before we get around. I know you've been here for a year, but what has the Film Commission okay, done? We, um, we, you know? I think we, also, you'll have to take that further. Just quickly a comment from quickly, you. Quickly, I think for us, for people that understand our struggle, they would know that we respect and we love the Cape Film Commission for the fact that I can be here. No one is paying me to come and say these things publicly. It just shows that I'm dedicated and I'm honest about these opinions. If Cape Film Commission is interested in transformation, I think the whole approach should not come from somewhere up there, yeah. down here, because it might not be well received. I think the best thing is let's just have an open approach, you know. Let it come from up and down. Let's meet somewhere neutrally, because we, we're not going to give all our lives. Like I've paid a lot of money to go to film school and before I even went to film school I was already a filmmaker. So it's not like the whole film school mission that made me who I am. You know, I was a filmmaker before I went to film school. What I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to make a living out yeah. of what I have. So if the Cape Film Commission is getting a lot of money to, 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 to engage people like me, I won't be apologetic on expressing my opinions. And I, I, do, I wish you won't take it as an attack rather than as an advice, because if we wanted to attack anyone, we would attack people, but this is not about attack. We know people's home addresses. We know everything that we need to know. I don't, I don't this, mean attack this, in that, this is, in this that is sense. Like, what, 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 I'm, what I'm trying to say is that we, are, we thought we were working with you. We thought that what we were doing was what you wanted us to do. But Mr. Lidia, behalf, I was not impressed by the letter that was sent out publicly to criticize us, saying that we, we don't want to do the work that we were volunteered by our comrades. I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm yeah. not sure what letter you're referring to. Okay. Clearly I find that uh, the Film Commission and the independent filmmakers have to find uh, equal ground or even mm. ground and come together and talk about and uh, really um, flesh out your what you're unhappy about and, and all of that. Uh, unfortunately we don't have enough time in this program to do that and that's where we conclude our discussion for the show. Uh, thank you so much uh, to our students Guess. This program was brought to you by the Friedrich Ebert Stiftung, the Alternative Information and Development Centre, in collaboration with Cape Town Community TV. I have